Wow, that was. Hey, Brian. Um, when can I watch Hacking the System again? (laughs) Well, you wouldn't believe it, Andrew, but they're running it a third time on National Geographic. On the twenty fifth, you'll be able to see it again. (laughs) Huzzah! Wait, is that going to be during the show? Maybe I don't know what time it is. What's uh? Hey, so uh, uh, we we need to put out a explaining the rules email to everyone about the um, the draft. Uh, yeah, I know we gotta do it today. That's uh, those are the, the, the yeah. Apparently, there are things that need to be done. Uh, all right, I'm gonna tweet out to the whole world. I don't care if the whole well, world knows. Yeah, it. hold on, wait life. a minute. Let's just make sure that we're up on DiamondClub.tv. Thanks for making me tweet this out and being a liar. <laughs> Uh, well, we're live now. The moment the no, we are we are live. We need to get it live on DiamondClub.tv. Yeah. yeah, like Brian has to go live before before you can enable for the DiamondClub.tv can go there. Uh, 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 I want to know if there are any mods, so I don't have to do it myself, which I will start to do. Yeah, now. I'll, I'll um, I'm on it. Um, are you? Do you have it open? No, I'm I'm gonna race you. Oh, I'm gonna race ya. Oh, but I have to remember a password. Ew. <laughs> and it's knowing Dan's good practices. <laughs> it's a really good password. I, oh my god! It's like yeah. Oh, it's I like also I have just to go remember look that up I made a little email. text file just for this very occasion. Did so I you? Could just, I could just search for Diamond Club or the Diamond logo. I think. Wait for it. Add new item. Nope. What if I... I got it. Uh, oh, you got it? Right. Yeah. Well done, sir. Ported. Mmm. Puerto, Puerto Rican League, League champ. champ. <laughs> Puerto Rican League champ. All right, while you finish that up, I'll uh, I'll go grab a soda or a soda water. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's all been done. And we are live. Boom. Excellent. You know what? I think I'm going to shake up the shape of this studio because uh, we changed everything for Mike TV. Uh-huh. And uh, like, so that's, that's the reason you could see this down here. But now it's like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe we can make something here because it's way, I don't know, way more freeform. Deep. Yeah. Like there's just a lot of space there. So look at this. That's You should leave it just for that, just in case you need to get up and run around. That's what I'm saying, right? Run back and forth. So are we live on on Diamond Club? We are. Oh yes. Hello, comma gang. We hope we do an amusing show called Weird Things, and we're recording it live right now. Dang it. Okay, if you had to punch Owen Wilson you, in your face right now or Ben Stiller in the face, which would you do? What I'm sorry, what was the first Owen part? Wilson or Ben Stiller? You had to punch one in the face. Which one? Now are we judging this on 
on what personal animosity, like you, like that they get because like not, I I find both to be awesome and yep. I love them both exactly. So like like right. what are the elements of why I'm punching them? The, these uh, uh because it is commanded for you to do and you must do and your reasons are your own and and I would be interested to hear them. And I'll I'll tell you I'll I'll even go first. Uh, I would not I would punch Ben Stiller. Because only because Owen Wilson tried to commit suicide, and I regard him as more fragile as a result. I I hear your logic on that, but Owen Wilson already has the messed up nose. Oh, see, oh, you wouldn't be destroying anything beautiful. Well, and also it's like, well, number one, you're not punching him, and like, we're, you, you only this bizarre deal that you've made only told me that I had to punch him in the head, not right in the nose, right? So well, I true. could just punch him in the side of the head. I'm gonna go with Owen Wilson because he is from. Texas and not LA, and I feel like he is therefore uh, more apt to take a punch. He, yeah, he's a right. more rough and tumble sort. It's fair enough. All right, uh, Andrew, you going to chime in on this? Uh, I think uh, I kind of like I, I don't want to hurt Owen's feelings. Yeah, you're See, with me. Yeah, I think he's a little more delicate soul. See, Andrew's in a different position because, like, he's in Los Angeles and, like, he is constantly, like, one person away from, like, knowing all these people and running into them at something. There's and the, you there's the know. very real likelihood that he'll run into one of them at a party. So, you know, I heard you were talking about punching me in the face. <laughs> That's both of them. <laughs> Which one of oh, those? Oh, it was stellar. So, so there, was a, uh, there was a gig that uh, we were working on where I was supposed to talk about um, do some magic and then talk about, um, uh, like, uh, safety on the job. And it was at a chemical factory, and we were talking about how dangerous all the chemicals are and so on. It's like a Simpsons episode. <laughs> right? No, Totally. Uh, but but like like basically they, 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 it was a day long conference and they just wanted to pepper some magic throughout and uh, at some point uh, we're just chit chatting and the guy who runs the company is deciding whether or not he wants to book me is like um, well you know uh, you know my son uh, does uh, does a bit of uh, he's made a movie or two uh, I was like oh yeah oh yeah he's like yeah are you are you familiar uh, with uh, with Wes Anderson uh, that's that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I was just like, <laughs> at the time, it was like seven years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's from. They're, they're all from the Dallas area, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. He was pretty awesome. Like, hey, I'll yeah. keep an eye out for him. If I can help him out, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always looking to give young talent a start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we ready to begin? Uh, oh, Kyle the Murphy is asking me to say something about science and record it. We'll do that. Um, can I can I get this out of the way? Uh, Kyle, am I just supposed to say the word science to the camera or something and then record it? I don't know. Uh, this was a, an email that I got uh, about all this stuff. But regardless, I'm going to set up this stuff to record the audio for weird things. Just scream science is all I have to do. Uh, why don't we get all three of us and you guys can... Use that. All right, here we go. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Science. I didn't record that. I don't know if I was supposed to. Science. There's that. I tried to say it not in that cliched Thomas Dolby way. All right, hold on here. I don't know if you've noticed that uh, Andrew's dismissiveness has put him to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'm recording, Andrew. Say science. Andrew. Science! <laughs> I, like, I like that take as if it's a bad dream. <laughs> silence! <laughs> All right, Justin. Science! All right, there. Those three of those. I'll put those up on an FTP for you later, Kyle, and you can do whatever you want with those and make Justin us look with the blue dumb. cast going on. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. It's my weird things, my weird blue light well, that is happening. What is providing the blue light? Did you go? Did you do like an IKEA LED thing? No, no. We've yet. This is uh, way more boot than that. It's just uh, those little, like a little colored light bulb from it's, it's Home the Depot. Sun, Brian. Oh, right it's on. collapsed. It'll happen to us in a second. That's. <laughs> 
Uh, no, no, that that starts in earnest this week. The actual building, we gotta we gotta make a decision on the computer and uh, and and start building things out this week. Awesome. All right, uh, talk for me real quick, Justin. Check, check, check. One, two, three. One, two, three, and then I'll get loud. Right on. Uh, and I'll dial myself back just a wee bit, and let me hear Mr. Andrew Main. I am Andrew Main, and I'm gonna tell you stories. About weird things. Yeah. All right. We're all at appropriate levels. Deleting and recording. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Justin Robert Young. Wish I said Brian because he was drinking as I said that. <laughs> oh, I missed my chance. <laughs> <laughs> Saving Brian because he was drinking. Drinking on the job yet again, Brushwood. That's two demerits. You know what's funny is I, I knew it was a gamble. The moment I picked up the cup and brought it to my face, I was like, I totally bet that Andrew's going to call me out as I'm doing it. And then the fact that you didn't, I was like, what a sweet gesture. And then Andrew made a whole bit about how he wished he had screwed me over. <laughs> that's that's Brian Brushwood you here. Say hello, Brian. God dang it. You got me. All right, good. <laughs> Well done, sir. Went back for a second. That was my victory lap, and then it, uh, it was a bad idea. Uh, this is why we do this show, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a lot of awesome stuff to share with you, um, and I've got, a, I've got a fun mystery for you guys. But first, I'm going to indulge me in uh, going over some things I did this week because I had a pretty cool weird things kind of week. Awesome. Walk right. us through it, man. So I had my buddy was in town from Florida, Captain Lugie, who you may have uh, heard from other stories. He's a qu kind of an interesting guy, Chris. He was, uh, I met him when he was a park ranger. Uh, he and his dad will do things like remove like large wild animals from places like giant snakes, things like that. And he's, he's kind of a Fort Lauderdale fixture. But anyhow, well, he was just, in town so for a couple... everybody knows, this dude is... I have I always said that he was effectively a character out of a Florida fiction, like a Carl Hyacin novel, uh, and then eventually he became an actual character in a Florida fiction novel. And I, I can't remember the book offhand, but he befriended like, Tom Dorsey. A, put him in one of his books. Yeah, Tom yeah. Dorsey put him in one of his uh, put a, a character inspired by him <laughs> in one of his novels. He literally has never had a job that is not Fort Lauderdale. That's he amazing. Lives on a houseboat. Like he has worked as like a cabana boy, a park ranger, a bartender. He oh, he has exclusively Fort Lauderdale jobs. For, first mate on a water taxi. Yeah. Oh yeah. Water <laughs> taxi operator. Uh, he he's, he's he uh, he. They were gonna a developer was going to uproot uh, a historic tree in Fort Lauderdale. And Chris is not like he may look like a tree hugger, but he's not. But he got upset about that tree. Then all of a sudden, you know, everybody thinks he's you know he's the. Uh, the hippie tree hugger, but he, he stood up for that. He's a neat guy. But yeah, so Chris is in town for a couple of days. And so we only had, I only from like Tuesday to Thursday. And I figured I'd give him the whirlwind tour of LA. And I pick him up at the airport. And I'm thinking, you know, it'd be really cool. And, you know, one of our hobbies we do in Fort Lauderdale is we'd go take a walk along Fort Lauderdale Beach and go a couple miles from one end to the other, free ranging conversations. And so a lot of stuff we talk about is a lot of weird things stuff too. Hop into the car, I drive south of the airport, and we pass the Tesla factory, right? And there okay. you see Tesla on the top of the roof. It's pretty cool. Get off the freeway, go down the road, and there is the SpaceX factory, okay? Our first stop is just there, like, you know, just to take a look at the factory. I'm like, this is cool. He's into this. So we take a look at the factory. I say, let's drive around the block. We drive around, and it's a huge, huge, huge facility. We come around the other side of the block and there are two flatbed trailers in the middle of the road. And then we drive up and there's an open gate and there's a bunch of security guards and the back door is open and we can peer inside of the SpaceX factory. And what do we see? 
but a dragon capsule wrapped in plastic getting ready to be moved onto the trucks and transported to some launch facility. Man, that's one of those things where it's like, uh, on the one hand, it's like, you know, there's there's the cynical part of me that wants to say, well, what did you expect to see? You went to a rocket factory and you saw rockets. But then there's <laughs> there's another part of me that is just like, holy sweet Jeebus. I didn't expect is... the back door to be open and we could see a rocket. Exactly. Game. Exactly. Oh, yeah. or, or, or specifically a giant piece of, of maybe the most important bit of history in uh in 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 mankind taking to the stars and you saw it with your own mention, stupid eyes like you could go to willy wonka's factory and you could take a look at the pink painted out exterior walls but it's another thing if a window is open and you can faintly hear the exactly that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> man Precisely. that's awesome so that was that was a really cool and i i turned to chris i'm like Listen, you're not even here for 30 minutes. I've already shown you a spaceship destined for the stars. <laughs> so so uh, after that, we went to uh, – did a few other sites. I took them to the the uh, uh, Vasquez Rocks, which I took Justin to yesterday, which are the Star Trek Rocks where they shot like, sure. the classic uh, arena the, episode. The, the, Pretty the, awesome. The, the, was it Gorn? Is that Gorn, what it was? Yep. Yeah. yeah. We fought the Gorn. And then uh, we went to the Mount uh, – the, excuse me, the Griffith Observatory, which is a fantastic thing, a site to see in L.A. They're open till 10 o'clock on weeknights, which is pretty awesome. You can see the planetarium shows. And we go downstairs, and they, they, this, this observatory was, the planetarium was built like in the 1930s. And about 10 years ago, they excavated the lawn in front of it. If you ever seen the Rocketeer at the end with the, the Nazi blimp and all that, and that old school observatory planetarium, that's it. Well, they excavated the front lawn, and they have built an entire underground museum below it. And I've been there once since that was built and had no idea that was there. Ha. This time, I go, under, go underneath it, and they've got the Leonard Nimoy Theater there. They've got some other things. Oh, wow. But this was uh, – this is, this is the point I'm getting to is, like, you can always learn new things. And uh, I'm going to profess some ignorance here. They have this display where they show your weight on different planets, and it's like this sort of like tile that you can stand on. It's separated from other ones, and it tells you how much you would weigh on different worlds. And I walked on a couple different ones where I'm like, I think this is broken. And I kind of said this in sort of a loud voice, like, looks like they need to fix this, right? <laughs> um, and then I, then I started thinking about it. I'm like, no, well, maybe it wasn't broken. And I went home, and I looked some stuff up, and... I had a realization, an epiphany that I have to admit that in, in all my years, I never really put the two and two things together and go, oh. So I'm going to ask you just off the top of your head, like, Brian, how much would you think you would weigh on, let's say, Mars? I know Mars is, and, and again, like Mar Mars is an easy one because I read the, the Red Mars, Green Mars, mm -hmm. Blue Mars trilogy. Uh, and I, I'm going to say it's like, uh, like what? Uh, Probably a little more than half what I weigh. Is that right? Like sixty percent. So, um, so I, I'd weigh about uh, ninety pounds, or maybe no. I'm sorry, point four, point four. That's what it is. Uh, so I would weigh roughly sixty pounds. Yeah, that's correct, sir. Okay, uh, nailed it. How Woo! much would you weigh? How much would you weigh on, let's say, Saturn? <laughs> oh, see, man, you thought you were real smart with that Mars stuff, didn't you? Back at you, back at you. All what right, you got on this Saturn stuff, Brian. All right. Now, well, I know Jupiter is the one where everything's like crazy, like 60, 70 times as much. So on Saturn, slightly That'd be less. Really great for if this were a Jupiter question, Brian. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, Saturn. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. Let's see. I'm, I'm about a buck fifty here on planet Earth. So on Saturn, uh. Well, wow, geez, holy cow. Uh, let's say 50 times as much on Saturn. I'm going to guess 1,500 times 5, 10,000 pounds. Is that right? Okay, now here's the thing. Now, this is not a trick question. We're assuming there's some sort of floating barge skimming the atmosphere sure. kind of thing. Okay. You know, so like when you see that where the yellow ends and space begins right there, if there's a floating barge and you're standing on top of it. I thought like you thought, Brian. Oh, good. I'm so glad that oh, I'm, no. yeah, I'm wrong. Oh, no, yeah, this is – this was – I'm there, and I stand on the Saturn thing, and I look at this. I'm like, this is wrong. This is clearly wrong because, like you, I'm looking at what is the mass of Saturn. Right. Totally forgetting the law of inverse squares. Oh, because it's so big, you are farther out from it. Is now, that Brian, what Brian, how much do you weigh right now? Just, just, well, just a buck 50, 150. Just uh, yeah. call it 150. I'm, I'm working on that. 
One before, before the 19 hour bike ride, he's going to go after publicly admitting you his weight you ready on the live stream. That's right. Saturn? What's it? Say it again. Ready for your weight on Saturn? Yeah. 159 pounds. No. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, you just Saturn got the is Saturn so big. Bomb dropped on you, Brian. <laughs> that mass is spread apart there. So remember, like it loses, you know, every every you know every meter half, you know, the distance. So, so it's, you're saying because because it is not dense and rocky the way mm -hmm. our planet is, instead very spread out. If yeah. you could stand at the border of where, give or take, the planet ceases. And and space it, begins. It would be the equivalent of 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 stand, you know, being way the heck yeah. up and away on on planet exactly. Earth. Exactly. If you condensed it to the size of Earth, then you would have this massive thousands of pounds weight. Okay, and that's what blew my mind. I'm like, holy cow! And so, because I was, I got fascinated because I was curious, like, how much would I weigh on Titan? And I started looking up from there and thinking, like, oh, well, at this size and all this. But then what is Titan, by the way? Because I'm, I am so in love. Titan's my new favorite planetoid in the entire uh, solar system. Um, the fact so that it's got, I, go. I mean, the fact that they have weather, that they have rain and 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 I guess snow. I don't know, and uh, just everything, just not with water. <laughs> Uh, let me pull it up. So, but anyhow, so I'd be a 20 hour bike ride if Brian was on Saturn. <laughs> Those extra couple pounds, man. I know. I freak, freak out, man. You're like, so, I rode to California. God, so much heavier on Saturn. It's like an extra nine. So pounds. your weight on Titan, Brian, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, call it roughly 18 pounds. Oh my God. Wow. So that's, yeah. uh, it's wow. A full day on the bike. So I here's where it gets really interesting, all right? So all now right. we're looking at that, and uh, if we, we calculate your, take your weight, so Brian, who was 150 pounds on Earth, uh, on Earth, you would weigh, now on Jupiter, How ready for how much you'd weigh on Jupiter? See, and again, like, like my brain wants to say like 10,000 kilos or some crap. 354 pounds. What? Yeah, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We See, put finally, that's where I belong. Apparently, my brain pounds. is on Jupiter, <laughs> and that's where Jupiter. that's you where I perceive Jupiter myself. Brain. Exactly. <laughs> we put you on Uranus, 133 pounds. All right. Whoa, Neptune, lighter. 168 oh. pounds. You'd hardly notice. Okay. Now this is where it gets really, 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 really kind of uh, curious to me. Is uh, uh, we talk about terraforming planets, right? Sure. You would weigh more on Mercury than on Mars. No, stop! Yes. Stop saying those words. Okay. <laughs> no, how how can that be though? Mercury is the smallest of 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 the 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 cool planets. Denser. Holy cow! I guess because the whole thing's like giant molten lead. You know, oh, it's just iron. deeper. There's just more to it. Yeah. So now, I, I like this, the early okay? planets more than the later ones. You know, when, I really when think that they got away from the complexity <laughs> of the early planets. You would weigh, but more, only, only a tiny difference. Like you would weigh 56.7 pounds versus 56.5 pounds on Mars. Wow. On the moon, you'd weigh 25 pounds. Okay. I believe that. Yeah. All right. Venus, care to guess what you would weigh on Venus? The, uh, ooh, ooh, I know this. Um, I, in fact, I'll let uh, Justin go. No. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I I, have you have you not seen how the three man weave works on this? <laughs> Andrew asks questions, you answer them. I make uh, vaguely hip hop references. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, I I'm gonna say I weigh 150 pounds. Uh, close. 136. Wait. <laughs> uh, so, of all the planets, the ones that would come closest to your actual weight. Would be roughly Venus or Saturn. Saturn being a gas giant is kind of hard, but you know we could build barges there. And you start thinking that you know the one planet that really that it would be really hard to get up in the morning is Jupiter, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. So, uh, number one, this is maybe the best factoid I've received in the last like three weeks or whatever, which only makes me think of another mind blowing factoid that I was not prepared for. And I don't know how we never ran across this. If you're an alien species and what you want to do is find a planet and steal all of its, uh, uh, water. Uh, well, well, tell me what you want, what you really, really, want. <laughs> uh, your gut would say, uh, come to earth. We're, we're right. floating in this stuff. As right? all the sci-fi novels. Yeah, say. exactly. That's, that's half the, that, that was the plot of V, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. 
I Except still think there are friends. If you're the aliens from Signs, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, and then in which case you probably, why did you come to Earth? We're covered in water. Really dumb. <laughs> also, dumb. what kind of biology evolves around water being poisonous? Mm. Uh, but the, but uh, in fact, like uh, the infographic that I saw was basically, here's the planet Earth. Here's how much of that is water as a sphere. Here's the moon Europa. Here's how much of that is water as a sphere. Europa has more water than like, our like entire stupid planet. How amazing is that? It's, it's, it is. Well, here is the thing. So we believe that to be true, except mm. there's now evidence that there is at least an ocean's worth of water dissolved within our crust. Oh wow! All right, Check so that so, crust, so this is all. Son. This is That's all. What I'm talking about <laughs> deep but, dish. Yeah, but oh y'all cutting off the crust. You're missing all the water. But we'll say of avail. Yeah, I agree. But like I, when I saw that thing too, that totally made me. You know, because we've talked before about Europa, and I think we've mentioned this a couple times. Like that, how much water is there? I, I, you know, as soon as I looked at this, I'm like, man, you know, like the weight. Like I'm like, well, geez, if we weigh this much on on Venus, well, I started looking up before the show how to colonize Venus. And there are a couple problems. Uh, yeah, okay. I would imagine. Uh, let's see. Uh, first let's of all, the fact out. that there's let's like lay out all the pros and cons. Pros Pro and cons. All right, Venus. Number Con one, go. It, all right, let's start with the pros. Venus, yeah. roughly the size of Earth, mm -hmm. comparable. Uh, you know, your bones will stay dense because you'll be walking mm -hmm. in an Earth-like gravity. Right. Um, all right. I'm liking that. I'm strutting. I got right. my Saturday night fever. Strut. You have a little bit more Venus. bounce on you. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, little bit of a little, little bounce. Uh, the, you, you got tectonic activity. You got, uh, I assume, some kind of spinning core, maybe a uh, uh, magnetic shield. Do we know if uh, if they have a magnetic shield? Do they have a spinning yeah, core? It's not really got much of a magnetic shield. All right, wait, 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 forget I said that. Spinners. Um, pretty much, that's the end of the upside. Uh, downside. All right. <laughs> sulfuric. Listen, lay it on me straight. <laughs> downside is the sulfuric oh, acid. Oh, wait a minute. Wait before you get into it. I want to add another pro. Venus, kind of a cool place to say you're from. Yeah. Like, oh, where are you from? Earth. Oh, whatever. I'm sorry. I'm just chilling out in Venus. <laughs> That's right. That's plus, plus, uh, think think about for the for the rising hip hop culture, all the things they could rhyme with Venus. Oh, good God. Yeah. Can't think of anything. It's <laughs> so uh, downside. Jesus. Little bit of sulfuric acid as the atmosphere. Little bit of 500 degree hot enough to melt lead atmosphere. All right, tell me something that isn't true in L.A. and Florida, respectively. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you what it makes me think of, is there was a moment in, uh, I'm going back to the Mars trilogy, where uh, uh, they sort of warm up Mars by by having a Saleta, which is a uh, arrangement of mirrors designed to take, you know, because Mars is far out there, uh, so you got these giant space mirrors that sort of focus the energy of the sun so that if you're standing on the surface of Mars, you look up and instead of being like a pinpoint or a very bright star, the, the sun looks the way it looks here on planet earth, right? As, as a whole thing. And this causes a whole like environmental discussion, like, Oh, we're destroying Mars. And there's a fight over the whole thing. When they solve it, uh, the party that uh, minor spoilers, if you're going to read this sci-fi book, which most of you won't, um, they, uh, they decide the ignoramuses won't <laughs> somebody, somebody <laughs> sends, Libians. They send the Saleta away, and as an extra little kind of uh, cherry on top, when they send the Saleta away, they send it uh, on a course that will land it to block some of the, uh, the Earth's um, uh, energy onto it. Basically, it goes from being a focuser of the sun's energy to a giant uh, uh, umbrella to shield part of Venus to send the symbolic message that, hey, man, we use this to get us where we are on Mars. There are other worlds than these, gunslinger, and, mm -hmm. uh, and off they go. Uh, so that's, that, that's what pops into my mind. So... Uh You've got yeah, you've got this really poison atmosphere. It's all like carbon dioxide. There's like no oxygen and like and you need water. So other than that, you know, we could say it's a fixer upper. But there's one really big problem that I, I realized that like a really a technical mm. problem. Do you know you how know long it's a, a big day problem is on when it's something more than poisonous gas <laughs> at 500 degree temperature? Do you know or, how long a day is on Venus? Oh, that's right. That's why the weather's so crazy. Is because it's like forever. It's it's it, is it tidally locked? Is that with the sun? It's not quite, but it's like 200 days or something. Earth yeah. days. Yeah. So 
that's the thing you would need is some sort of spin. I mean, you could, there's like, the, they talk, what you mentioned is one thought is like, if you put a bunch of solar mirrors and stuff there, and then you could try to do that, it gets to be a lot of work. So, you know, if it's one thing like, oh, it spins nice, it, if it had a magnetosphere, that's great. All we needed was to fix the atmosphere, done. I'll get on it tomorrow. But it's just, you know, too massive and too slow moving for that. But other than that, the gravity would be great. Somebody was saying... It's also where all the women are. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> all the ladies. You know, I hear women are from there. Yeah. According to a book title I read once. In Written the by the former chauffeur for Doug Henning and his wife. Oh, my God. Is that really what it is? <laughs> That's how they met. It was John Gray's Doug Henning chauffeur. <laughs> That's amazing. And that's the, the the woman's the Barbara DeAndres. That was Doug Henning's wife. There, there was somebody. I, I, I wish I could remember the that details. That dude might have actually been from Mars, though. Like that, if it's a literal description of Doug Henning and his wife, that might actually be literally true. Uh, I, I forget who it was, but somebody was saying that for terraforming or for colonizing uh, opportunities, he heavily was betting on Venus over Mars, which surprised me. And I wish I could find the facts to back that up, but somebody out there is looking on the internet now. Yeah, you just need to do, like, the problem is just Mars, you know, we we can use existing technology right now to build something that human habitat there. Venus is like, it's hard enough to keep probes from melting. So, so what do you say to people who are like, stop even talking about colonizing Mars. It's not going to happen. There's no magnetosphere. Therefore, everyone there will die. Like, uh, is, is there a, a, a backup to that? Why, why the case for colonizing Mars over digging tunnels and asteroids like we've talked about before? Uh, I think that one, I mean, one is the, the, the you, you don't have to spin, spin up Mars to create gravity. I, I, I'm a big believer in like, I think asteroids would be the bigger sort of area for that. But I think the idea is that Mars is, that you start at one point on Mars, you start with Mars and digging tunnels, and then you get up to building atmosphere and then you get up to the building of, of you know, you're going to get to the point where, you, you know, solving some of these problems and the idea that you, over a several hundred year scale, you make Mars habitable. But you have to start at some point and that, well, that it is. And I, I, I guess I guess my my flip on that would be you can you could st- we, we already built the biosphere too. you know, we already built, you know, terrariums and, and, and uh, you know, places for butterflies and birds or whatever like we could do that today, right now, on mm-hmm. on Mars without without new without having to learn a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, there's 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 and there's smaller problems where it gets hairy details, but we don't need new physics to figure these things out. We just need to advance the technologies we have. So, I think that you know we we look at that as it's a solvable problem, and and one of the reasons that people like there's like some oh we should go to the moon first. Well, the moon trying to do the moon is a big complicated problem, and it would delay getting to Mars and. There was a, uh, a really good podcast that was on Friday, and it was uh, Gwen Shotwell, who is the president of and COO of SpaceX, was talking about the longer term goals of SpaceX. And part of like their focus is on their focus is on, you know, Mars and the next generation of vehicles that they are creating that SpaceX is building are specifically for the purpose of the colonization of Mars. This is the head of a company that is worth billions of dollars that is handling government contracts, is a reliable partner with NASA, leading technology company, has says, yes, and part of our mission statement is the colonization of Mars. Which, I mean, like, how crazy, like, it ain't like it's, like, somebody else's, like, pet project. It ain't, it ain't like, you know, like, Larry or Sergey or, or you know, Tim Cook or somebody's like, oh, so I'm funding this other thing, and, like, you know, like, we would hope to get to Mars or Bezos, you know? Like, we hope to get to Mars at some point. It's like, no, no, no. no. Here's a company we have been incredibly successful up to this point, and like the projection, if the company is to succeed, it will be because we achieved our goals of going to Mars. Yeah, I think it's pretty pretty awesome. I mean, it just With it's, rockets. <laughs> but I think that part of the the attraction of Mars is that you could Mars could be a if you're looking to have a home that's familiar in some ways, then Mars is the place to start with that. And, and there's, there's going to be a certain amount of technological, you, you know, and, and it's, it's interesting that you put it that way because um, I think there's a definite value to 
the fact that like like uh, th- there's there's the issue of what we could do and what culturally we're prepared to do. For example, mm-hmm. if we're going to make a space arc and spend uh, I don't know fifteen twenty generations to get to some other you know a chunk of the galaxy uh, to colonize, then while you're on the way, if you're going to spend so much time in zero g it would make more sense to genetically modify your children to have, you know, four sets of arms instead of legs. Cause legs are dumb in zero G or whatever, you know, or, or, or to, uh, you know, shear up the bones to make them strong or whatever. But culturally that's an abhorrent idea. And that, yeah, that we're, horrifies we're us. Yeah, we do that as a species, you know, some cult <laughs> you might do that. But, you know. but my point is, is that uh, logically by the numbers, uh, burrowing into a bunch of asteroids and virtualizing much of our existence is what makes a lot of sense to get us off this planet. But culturally, I don't think we're ready for that. I think we would feel like, you know, we're not destined to be mole people. Yeah, I think that I think that you're not, it's not going to start with a coloni- let's colonize asteroids project. It won't start like that. Right. It's going to start with, you're, you're going to do like many of your boom towns and places like that, which then themselves are not destinations people want to end up in. You go there because there's resources, and then maybe you end up creating kind of a nice place to live, like Las Vegas or whatever. And You know, I was looking up some statistics last night because I was kind of curious, like, what are our most massive construction projects? And the the biggest things we build that are moving are, of course, like our cargo container ships. The biggest ship there is is a a natural gas liquefaction plant that's going to just sit off the coast of Australia. Maersk, you know, one of the the biggest, like, cargo movers in the world, uh, they just started uh, building, having 20 ships built that are about... 1,300 feet long and like 200 feet across. 20 ships like that. All right, hold on. 200 feet across is almost a football field wide, and 1,300 feet is a, it's like almost a quarter mile long. Yeah, and they're having, they have like 20 of those things. So, so, so then- basically, you picture, uh, basically, you're talking about a ship the size of most high school uh, football fields, right? About that uh, picture, the track around it, it's, qu- it's certainly a quarter mile all the way around. A football field. Then you got to unfold it. So, and then, well, it's so big. even bigger, bigger than your high school football auditorium. Yeah, and so, and yeah. then another cruise. So, like line, a high school line. football field in Texas. Then another line <laughs> yes. is having has a fleet of thirty five ships that are like eleven hundred feet long and like two hundred fifty feet across. And I started thinking, like, if you were building these in space and attaching them and building rings, you could have a ring with you know a mile circumference and a thousand feet across right you yep. could build you could have that that's the, that if you put that if you put that metal in space you could build your space thing now, now, of course okay you, uh, when, when, you, when you talk about and it seems like such an obvious thing like yeah spin some stuff around create artificial gravity but like if you've ever ridden the gravitron at your local county fair uh you know that the very act of looking left or right creates significantly unpleasant side effects, right? Yeah, and and that has to do with one is that uh, that's spinning fast enough to counteract the fact that you're being pulled down towards the Earth. So this okay. is, okay, so 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 it's the fact that there are two gravitational fields. Uh, is there not an illness factor if you're in zero G? It depends on the size of the diameter of, of the spin. If you're spinning, if your feet are moving a hell of a lot faster than your head, you know, you you get this sort of destabilizing, and that's why you want to have a larger, wider ring. And we've done we've done like small scale tests with like uh, like Gemini craft on tethers and stuff. And you know, we're there's a planned ISS project at some point to put a habitat and to sort of rotate it. The larger the ring, the easier, the less noticeable it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you get something that's got you know a thousand foot diameter. You know, and there's there's actually like, you know, there's math to say if you have it this size or bigger and you're rotating at this speed, you're probably not going to have this noticeable effects. You know, when you get a much smaller ring, et cetera, then it's, yeah, these problems come into play, you know. So. So uh, two two random thoughts, and this has nothing to do with anything we've talked about. But but now, you know, since we seem to be on the subject of space today, uh, when I in, in the late 80s, when I was a, a preteen. I was reading some uh, magazine that talked about a plan by, by the fr- 
<laughs> it actually, uh, uh, yeah, man, actually, there's that too. Um, the, uh, there was a plan by the French to celebrate some anniversary or other by inflating a giant ring in space that they claimed would be at times as bright as the full moon. And for whatever reason, it didn't happen. I assume that there's all kinds of international pressures, the fact that it would be essentially constant light pollution or whatever. But um, as we enter an age where there are fewer political detriments to doing that kind of thing, and as more of the power goes to private enterprises, like, number one, I'm surprised that in the year 2014, nobody has started shooting a laser light show that's secretly an advertisement onto the moon or nobody has inflated a giant space ring to advertise something uh, like, like why has this not happened yet? And how long until it does is, I guess what I'm asking you. Two reasons. Uh, one to do the light show on the moon. You're, you're still going to need a big damn powerful laser. Yeah. Um, and, and there have been, there have been like companies and stuff that have talked to this thing around second. If you want to do the big reflector thing, uh, you're going to get a lot of pushback from astronomers, and if you're going to have to go use one of the current companies to provide space light for this, you're going to the reaction, the negative reaction to it, you know, is going to be pretty. You, know, you have to have somebody that will risk putting you up there to do that, like considering the fact that they make their money with other people that might not like the fact yeah, that Yeah, and you need to be that. sure you're going to be a good orbit partner. What you're going to put up there isn't going to interfere. And I'm not saying it's not going to happen, you know, but I think that that's been, I've heard some stuff like Pepsi was thinking about doing something like that. And there'd been talks of, of trying to do that. And, and it wouldn't surprise me if for propaganda purposes, the Chinese government decides to do something along those lines at some point. Um, but, you know, the, the, we're still at the phase of like, A, you know, if you're doing that, just to be show off and there are all these inherent risks, then you're kind of a jerk. Yeah. Well, but I, 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 I do feel like, I feel like, and again, I'm trying to divorce it from the political, right? Because like political, if China were to even take the most innocuous message, let's say they wanted to put the Chinese symbol for peace on the moon or whatever, like at the end of the day, like they don't care that the, that the message is peace. They care that it's a Chinese character on the MF and moon or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, um, there are political ramifications for that that'll cause big trade difficulties. But let's say Google, though. Google wants to do, like, you know, hooray for the internet on the moon. Uh, they, they don't so have Ed, as much. Like, number to one, lose. can we just understand an amazing AdWords opportunity <laughs> uh, if they can put something up there on the yeah, moon? Yeah, yeah, take a selfie and send it in to our Google contest, and your face will be on the moon. Uh, I, I mean, I guess, I guess now that the we are more open to commercial opportunities in space than at any point in all of human history, I'm surprised that we haven't seen somebody <laughs> lay down, you know, uh, twenty million dollars, a hundred million dollars, you know, five hundred million dollars to do something like this. I think, I think we're it's going to get more feasible and practical. The problem is, like, if you want to do something like deface the moon, you're going to risk the ire of, you know, yeah, the <laughs> fact that we put an American flag there and only an American flag there that you can't even see upset people. Well, and, and, and plus also, but, but, but keep in mind, it's, it's, I mean, that American flag is still there and has always been there. We left trash on the moon, real trash yeah. on the real moon. American a trash. A laser light show could be like a one-off opportunity where oh, yeah, it's I agree, like, but the, the laser know, light, that's, you know, the, especially, the, especially it, if it's they, just, it, like, it's a touchy subject. It is, it is, all right. If you ever let's say you you mentioned we left trash on the moon. If you've ever lived in a in a condominium or a place with a public shared pool where it is everybody who is paying in to keep the pool nice, imagine that with the whole world times a billion. If you do something to affect the public earth resource of the moon. And technically, like to paint the moon with a laser, like an earth-based laser. You're talking about a death ray. Sure, sure. Okay, so so try this on for size, though. Imagine a publicity event, right? Let's say let's say two years from now, Google. Ryan is opening Moon Marketing Inc. That's a, right. That's right. A Brushwood 
subdivision. Uh, let's say sometime in the next two years, SpaceX uh, gets their their act together and and they they're able to very very cheaply start throwing stuff up in the, in the orbit. They start doing that. Google puts up its own satellite. Google says, "Hey, among other things, uh, this satellite has a a a very powerful microwave laser, whatever, whatever." Uh, and they say, "We are going to project." Uh, on roughly something the size of, um, uh, we'll we'll say uh, uh, not Africa, maybe half of Africa. I don't know, like South America, L- Africa. L- L- yeah, half Africa. <laughs> they we, we're going to project an important message on a giant chunk of the moon. Now you will barely be able to see it with the naked eye, mm-hmm. but if you have even a modest telescope or a pair of binoculars, you'll be able to clearly read this message. We're going to do it for for about, you know, two nights or whatever. Like like that to me seems so small of an event that everybody would be okay with it, right? I, I yeah, I, I guess I, I think that I think that your reflector idea would be much. I mean, the amount of energy it would take to literally do that. You're talking the Navy doesn't even have a laser that could do that. Um, you're 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 talking you're a space based death laser capable of doing that. Would that's the first thing people well, how bright is this laser? Because that's that's effing bright. Okay, you know? okay. Let, 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 let me give a different version. You know how um, on on lasers you could put different uh, filters on there that automatically separate the light into a, a shape or whatever. Imagine they do like a uh, uh, I don't know like a three mile by three mile film that takes sunlight and does sure. the same kind of thing, right? Sure. The, okay. the point is they 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 spend a modest amount, and the end effect is that. If you have a, a, mm-hmm. a pair of binoculars or a telescope, you can see taking up about 5% of the visible surface of the moon sure. yeah. a message. And I think if they if they coach it with, and this is the valuable scientific thing we're going to do, you know, too, I think for people protesting, it'd be cool. A thing that I always thought would be cool when I was a kid was, you know, the, the, the displays that use the micro mirror arrays now, you know, for like television. So basically like a lot of te- projections television now, what it is, it's a microchip and it has thousands of mirrors that either tilt one way or the other right wait no i don't know about this explain yeah, this that's, to that's me. how like a like a majority now of a lot of your your video projection systems oh, like, work. like dlp a, dlp does like a spinning mirror thing yeah and so you have these little things they either spin one way or they tilt or whatever right imagine on the moon we just cover the moon with reflectors and we just turn the moon into a display. <laughs> oh my God! So you're saying just scatter all these and actually turn mirrors at us, where each one. Ref- oh my God! There's no reason this couldn't work. You know, you could, or you could just put it in space. You could have a series of reflectors. You could, if we if we built a like the Navy's looking at right now, a building an array to be able to beam power down to specific points so they could power ships and other assets around the world without having to send refueling. Now, if you had this big, huge array with a bunch of individual discrete mirrors, you could also, hey, guys, let's turn it into a big TV screen. And then you can just play something really inoffensive, like Forrest Gump. Yeah. And you can translate it to all the different languages, and we'll watch it. Run, Forrest, run. It's trending on Twitter worldwide. What an amazing by the world of Coke moment. Can, can, can I tell you, like, the weirdest part is, as you suggested that, the first thing that popped in my mind was... Uh, was that, ooh, we're going to need a bigger population in order to justify that expense. We're going to need more eyeballs in order to 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 pay for all of that. I, I think if you're using it, it might be surprisingly cost-effective. You, if you look at what we're looking, when you're talking about space-based reflectors, your thin mylar sheets, you know, you take, you know, what the total output of Reynolds wrap for a year, foil might do it. So here's here's a good question, and somebody was asking, like, okay, so we're playing around with these ideas. What does that mean for light pollution? Um, oh, it's horrible. Well, I, what, and my gut says that we've already lost the war for light pollution, right? I mean, there's so much light pollution, that, but but also it's it's it is kind of insignificant because we already have telescopes outside of the planet, in which case we get the valuable intel that any of us yeah, can access but most, at any time. most observations are still terrestrial-based, and then there's that, do you want to cover up the chunk of the sky that it turns out that big asteroid's coming from? Well, I mean, there's that, but it's like we're not going to spot that asteroid with our eyes. We're going to spot it with uh, with various space-based telescopes. You're assuming, we? but again, how much of the, your, your, a lot of this, a lot of that Earth, that stuff is actually still terrestrial-based right now. Eventually, yeah. yeah, I think we'll. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is like, like as 
the light pollution increases, I am assuming that the number of space-based telescopes Agreed. will You're increase as right. well. Totally agree. Yeah. And like that's like planetary resources. Their ARCID project is about doing it. I think with with rapidly reusable spacecraft, you're going to get your local community college will be able to afford putting a, their own telescope up there and, and private. So, yeah. Um, all right. So how far take away a are we from getting our direction. own telescope? Hey guys. The Weird Wait. Things Telescope. Oh, the Weird Things Telescope. Oh, uh, side note, at the end of the tour, I took my buddy to, we went to the California Space Center and we saw the Space Shuttle Endeavor. And if you haven't had a chance to see one of these things up close, it is an amazing experience. Have you ever? I want to say, I, I, and again, this is like a half-remembered thing. Uh, I, you, you know, I went to space camp, right? <clears throat> and uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. And so uh, I remember going around seeing all of the, uh, uh, the, the, the rockets. And uh, that was as a kid. And then as an adult, I had a show at the University of Alabama, Huntsville. And it turns out that the guy that booked me worked, his, his fiance worked at the uh, sp space camp. So I got to go go revisit it where they had added like a Saturn V that uh, you were able to walk all the way along and, and take a look at. I, I don't think, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I, I know I've seen the tiles, the heat tiles, mm -hmm. and I got in trouble for touching one because <laughs> there were fiberglass, you know, uh, components or whatever that might injure me. Um, I don't think I have seen. So what's shuttle. neat is they have this in this big warehouse type building and you walk in there and the thing's maybe elevated 10 feet off the ground so you can walk underneath it. You can walk all around it. You get a good look at it. And you realize how big this thing is because this thing is, you know, it's 122 feet long, okay? 122 feet long and it's you know 80 feet wide, right? And this thing is big. This thing is just ginormous. And you sit there and you look at this thing and like, this is fatter than an airplane that I've been on. You know, this is fatter than an airplane. And this thing, this thing I'm looking at has been up in space. It's orbited. It's like docked with like, you know, ISS, et cetera. This is incredible. And then you think, and then it lands by gliding back to Earth. <laughs> you like, you look at this. Well, and, and, and the fact, like, like, it makes me think of, uh, again, there are legitimate criticisms to the entire space shuttle program. Uh, there, it is, it is, there's a reason that the Soyuz has never had a, a loss of, of, of craft. And yet, uh, you know, the, the shuttle was a 2% failure rate or something ridiculous. Um, but all that aside, if you watch the IMAX movie, hail Columbia, uh, it is such a triumph. I mean, it's, 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 it's not how we would do it. If we had it to do over again, there was a lot of compromises all the way through everything. There are difficulties and there's a good reason that the plan is being retired. But all that being said, in the 70s, they said, let's make a spaceship that we could keep using over and over again. And then they made a spaceship that they were able to keep using over and over and over again. That's, That's really insane. remarkable. Yeah, there, there were two fatal Soyuz missions. But other than that, you know. No, 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 no. Uh, not, not, well, and keep in mind, I'm quoting, I'm quoting Richard Garriott because uh, uh, when I was asking him if he was uncomfortable with the Soyuz, he said that uh, he said that that the equipment there was a zero failure rate. But but I don't know if it's like what I I, I seem what you're saying sounds familiar. But I believe it was like uh, not related to its performance in space or something. Uh, Soyuz eleven ended in disaster. The crew capsule depressurized during preparations for reentry, killing the three man crew. Okay, so they died in space. Soyuz one. Uh, pa Padre uh, SJ is saying uh, uh, before nineteen seventy one, there were two fatal accidents, but since then, I guess whatever the latest iteration is is what Richard Gale yeah, was yeah. saying. Yeah, and, and the same the latest iteration of the shuttle, we could say. So, um, no, so this is a very reliable. So I will, so I use as a workhorse as a per, percentage of launches versus its most successful human spaceflight craft. Craft there is absolutely, absolutely true, and it's also designed specifically to do. It's it's nowhere near the complexity of the shuttle was. And again, I will go on and on about the problems of the shuttle, a '60s era project with '70s level design that was already antiquated by the time, and it was just a a you know the the first one blew up because of pork barrel politics, 
you know, the second one was just because of bureaucratic oversight and, and, and the, all the inherent problems in that. Again, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, but it's hard to compare the two because one is this humongous, massive thing that is the size of one of the largest airplanes you can have conceive of and carries entire school buses back down to earth. And the other one is a can <laughs> that right. is, um, anyhow. Uh, and, so uh, where, where can right people see a shuttle now? In the Ukraine is uh, a lot more attention is being paid to the idea of having our own domestic, uh, human transport to the space station in space outside of, you know, Russian launch. That's crazy. 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 Uh, so where, where, where can people see a, sh a shuttle now? There's, you can there's see one in, in LA, in, right? Discovery one in LA. LA. Uh, there's uh, one in, uh, I think the uh, Ca Cape Canaveral space center. Um, trying to figure out where they all ended up. But was if you there look one up, in, in DC? Did we see one in DC or was it only there for a limited time? Well, uh, I know that there's. Uh, uh, I guess the only, really the only remaining ones is you have you have Atlantis is still around somewhere, Endeavors around somewhere, Discoveries around. Uh, I, I believe is is Discovery in. I LA. got it. I can tell you right now. Okay, uh, but then there's also the Enterprise. Uh, I know the Enterprise is the one that they built never to go into space, but just to prove that it could uh, land. And and was was you know uh, compatible Atlantis with Atlantis is on display at Kennedy Space Center. Okay, um, Challenger is in heaven. <laughs> Columbia is in heaven. Discovery is at the Udvar Hazy Center in Virginia. The Stephen, so it's in display in Virginia. The Enterprise, as you mentioned, the test was is on is at the Intrepid Intrepid in New York, uh, which is the big like. Uh, uh, the big uh, aircraft carrier, which like every time I go to New York and I drive by there, there's like some big gay rave going on in this can, aircraft can, can carrier. I, can I say real quick about the Enterprise that one of my greatest it's, memories of the Enterprise has nothing to do with the space program at all? It was, but uh, it was instead a big gay rave on the <laughs> Intrepid. <laughs> no, well, it, and this is the only reason I bring it up is because we're going off topic clearly. But there was some episode of of uh, Jeopardy I was watching, and I was 12 years old at this at the time. This chick was clearly way in first place. And uh, they got to Final Jeopardy, and the question was, uh, you know, uh, what was the name of the version of the space shuttle that never flew but was used for practice or whatever? And this chick was, like, so upset. She was shaking her head. She was so clearly screwed. And she wrote Enterprise as a joke. She wrote it as a joke. Like, as, like, the Star Trek USS Exa exactly. Enterprise. Exactly. Like, whatever, the Enterprise Turned out she got it totally right, won, won a bazillion dollars or whatever. And it was like, that to me was one of the most remarkable things I'd ever seen on television at the time. Uh, yeah. So there's also like the adventure, which is just like a, you know, a mock-up thing. And so I'll tell you, the thing that surprised me looking at the Endeavor was how uh, you look at the tiles, you get that, and you see them under there, and you see like there's like individual like hex nuts screwing each one in, and they're each numbered. And then you look up above the white area, the white tiles, it looks like it's cocked together with ceiling tiles, and it's just the most unaerodynamic, unseemly thing. If I was making a movie about the shuttle and my prop department presented this to me, I would fire them. I'd be well, like, no, this is this is not space worthy. But 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 I guess that's the whole thing is that um, uh, relative to the overall size of everything, it's plenty aerodynamic, I assume. Right. It's, it's sort uh, it of like, worked. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, uh, like Europa on the surface of Europa, there are giant cliffs and crags and giant canyons and so on. And yet as a single object, I remember somebody telling me, that uh, and this may be totally wrong. I'm sure somebody will correct me, but but Europa is the single smoothest marble uh, ever created, known to man. Basically, was was for all those giant jags up and up and down. There's not a handheld uh, two inch marble that we could create that wouldn't be. I guess I guess there probably would be. Now that I think about it, because you could, especially in free fall, you could take a liquid that's solidified. But uh, at, at any rate, the point is like like out of the entire size of the thing, those little th those jags that look so big up close don't really affect it. All right, gentlemen, I think we need to do one more weird thing. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna save a couple of these things for next week. Uh, all right. I have an offer for you guys. All right. Uh, yeah. How right would on. you guys like to take a vacation? <laughs> this is a, it seems to be a recurring theme. You know, we love I, vacations. We hate I our know lives. You guys love vacation. You guys <laughs> like Brazil? Man, I'd say, well, a lot of time I look at my life and I'm like, this 
sucks something awful. I want to do something other than this for a little bit and then go back to my terrible drudgery. Right. But most importantly, whatever it is we do, it has to be in a location that's not where we are right now because God, yeah, no. clearly where we are is an inferior place on the planet. We need to go to a superior place. Stinks like a pile of butts. Let's, right. let's hit the bricks. Working at the butt plant isn't our best job, Justin. We, uh, I thought the money was good, but the methane factory wasn't where... Working on some butt moves. <laughs> Joe, how would you like to visit the lovely Ilha de Cromera Grande? It's a Brazilian in. island located 35 kilometers away from the coast of Sao Paulo. State. In. Already. Already in. Number I've, one, I've, uh, Brazil, hot place. Got the World Cup coming up. The Olympics coming up the next year. They are they are balling out of control right now. I've already packed my floral pattern shirts and my thong underwear. And I uh, got two flip-flops on. I went ahead and I got some shots from just a random guy who said they would make me immune from everything in Brazil. Yep. And those things include uh, everything that happened in City of God and <laughs> AIDS. Right. Also, he uh, gave me an extra shot, said that it would make me crocodile proof and yeah. piranha proof. Listen. This island has got a steep terrain. It's nice. You've got some hills you can climb up onto. It's... Uh, you know, not a not a not a small island by any account. Let me let me take a look here. Give you a, you know, it's it's forty three hectares. Okay, so you know, how many acres is that? Um, forty three hectares is uh, more than one acre, as I remember from my metrics um, conversion. Let me tell you right now, forty three hectare. Uh, let me go to uh, Wolfram Alpha and. Uh, so while while you're doing the math on that, like we. Right. I yeah. feel like this is a great deal. Uh, obviously, we are going to get a... Uh, I, mean, I don't know if it's free, if we're paying. We probably should have agreed on a price before we <laughs> immediately threw our lot in. But I assume this is at least a, a reduced uh, kind of trip. I would imagine that, there's some kind of value. You're not going to make us pay retail, the, after it's, all. It's about the equivalent of Vatican City in land area. Yeah. All right. That's big. <laughs> All Big right. enough. It's nice. You know, it's it's you can just traverse it in a day, you know, walk around it and and enjoy it. I mean, we're not moving there, right? It's just a vacation. We gotta You're be just, back at the yeah, bus plant visiting. next week. Just, that, sure. That's it. That's all. Um, so yeah, and I'm I'm not gonna charge you anything. I'm gonna let you live there. So Yeah. We're all good. Man, I'll tell you, Look, I'll bet you just, I'm gonna open up a little bed and breakfast and we're just gonna fry case, up some eggs and plantains. Just in case you have any concerns, just let me know what they are. All right. So uh, we get there. Uh, you know, we find a nice little place. You know, we're, we're getting a, you know, we, you wanted to be smart, right? So you go to, to shop at the supermarket before you arrive at the place you're going to stay. We, we can make some sandwiches. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian, how are you feeling so far on our I mean, little vacation? Uh, everything's 100% win, right? We go, we relax, we we uh, we, we unplug, we uh, we high-five each other, play a little volleyball, a little one-on-one. -on -one. There's one little first catch, just a tiny little okay. catch. I need to put you guys on my boat in the middle of the night because the Brazilian Navy won't actually let me bring you there uh, if they know I'm doing it. So we got to slip in under cover of darkness? Yeah, yeah, I just got to do that. That's fine. Like, listen, Bri. Covert. Ad ad adventure tourism. Dude, dude I, 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 I like. get to take some shoe polish and put it on my face like I'm a spec uh, ops. No, let's stay Ooh. away from that. It's let's, a bad uh, idea. Okay, all right. No, that's inappropriate, even do I, for Brazil. We, we, uh, I, do, do I get to come in like a uh, like fan man uh, a with ball with a giant with a giant uh, paraglider that I come in on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get you on there now. The name in uh, Spanish means the big burnt island. Uh, I mean, but it's it, not actually on fire. No, it's yeah, not. It's not on no, fire. No, I know That's what it's about. That is a lie spread big by people. Burnt island. Oh, you get, get burnt. It. I yeah. see. The, the fishermen tried to occupy it before by setting fires on it to clear cut whatever, and that didn't succeed. Yeah, wait. I mean, but it's, it's not still all burnt up. No, is it? What do we no, look no, like? Not. A couple it's of blush. Brazilian fishermen. Yeah, come on, man. It's look, teeming with wildlife. If now. we're gonna look, we're gonna set up. That's we're great. We, I mean, we can bring one of those your nice cameras. We can take some photos. We're we're gonna set uh, we're gonna set up a laser tag park on the island. I feel like I'll tell Keep you what. You like, my, my family, it's a great uh, idea. My, 
My aunt and uncle, they go down to Costa Rica all the time. They have a cute little monkey that jumps into their backyard. They feed it grapes. It's a hilarious time for everybody. This is, is so far nothing I'm hearing is is phasing us. I feel like um I'll tell you what, let me call Bonnie. We'll go ahead and uh juggle some things. Next week good for you, Justin? Dude, uh I'm all over it. All right. I I think this is a great choice. Any <laughs> other questions, any other hesitations, just let me know. I mean, all right, let's just so I know <laughs> Fashion-wise, what to wear in the photos we're taking with the native wildlife so the color profiles aren't intensely clashing. Good point, good point. What animals are on the island? You said teeming with wildlife. I just want to know what kind of photos we're looking for. So you've got, there are birds, there are a lot of trees, there are a lot of birds in the trees. I love birds. Yeah. So um, uh, now, now uh, the bird. How big? Of, how big of birds are we talking? Are they bigger, bigger than me? No, no. These are like tropical birds. Yeah. See, whatever. Much. I could take a tropical bird. We could eat those. Justin, you ever eat a tropical bird? Might uh, be rare. I'll tell you what. Have you ever yeah. eaten a meal that made a species extinct? I've been on a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> um, the birds, no, right. and then you know the other. You know, if you just sort of said what types of animals you'd find the typical types of animals you would have on a Brazilian. So what? Uh, you know, you got your birds, a couple uh, monkeys, a meerkat. What yeah. are we else? What are we? I mean, at? I mean, we're not we're not in physical danger, are we? Yeah, uh, lizards. Man, that was that was a weird evasion. All of a sudden, oh, I'm sorry, got, I missed something. Man, uh, he just got real no thirsty. No, no, no. I, I, I said, are we in physical uh, danger? Yeah, okay, and hold on. Wait suddenly, a Ryan, are we're we always in physical danger? Get, no, okay, wait, but you really Is reacted. Is there any history of death, human death, by way of animals on the island? Maybe some legends and stuff. When you <laughs> try to find a counting of it. All right, Remember so, so, so the, is the legend of the hidden temple, Silver Snake. <laughs> All right, so if we were hanging out, talking to the locals, we shared a, a Lone Star beer around a campfire. What stories might the locals tell us about this area? <laughs> Well, there are no locals on this island because <laughs> they're all too smart. <laughs> they're all they're all because remember, clear. maybe don't let anybody live. There is one legend, and again, it's a legend. It's not really well documented. <laughs> You know, and one moment they're telling you, you know, about, you know, dinosaurs in the jungle somewhere else. And the next sure. they're telling you this legend. You can't believe this is, you know. Noise. I mean, it's all number just noise. One, and also, uh, but, I'd say this. How stupid as I tell you. All right, all right wait, well, hold on. Go ahead, Justin. I'm just saying this. If there's no locals, then we only have to buy two of these brand new Don't Hassle Me, I'm Local Big Burnt Island t-shirts that I'm bringing <laughs> for our vacation. I'll tell you what, man. Print out a whole bunch. Set up a cafe press on that. Then anyone who visits yeah. us can take one home. Uh, so, the, the, you know, they, they tried to burn the island and it wasn't successful because it's fireproof. There's a reason why they maybe tried to burn the island, and it's why it got its name. And do you remember? Do you remember Jurassic Park three? Yeah, yeah. You know, when I say you know the Navy won't let you go near an island. <laughs> yeah, it's either military base, maybe undis unexploded munitions, radioactivity, and then this other cause, King what? Kong. Is it King Kong? Is I mean, it Skull I mean, Island? Is, is it is it some kind of um uh, I don't know like like creature that they that they did uh, that they can't let get into the local ecosystem? No, the creature they don't want to let into the ecosystem is humans. Um, so the legend is the legend has that the last island's inhabitants were lighthouse keeper, a lighthouse keeper and his family. And one night, one of them entered through the window and attacked the man and his wife and their children. They tried to escape with their boat, but the uh, from the branch injected them. Uh, they died before reaching the shore. I'm sorry. It sound, wait, is there like a crazy it sounded disease? like there was a mumble there. Can you please restate what you just said? I mean, I, hate, I don't want to put addiction? words in your mouth, but it sounded like you said maybe there's like a disease rampant no, on the island. Not a, that, not no, it injected the mumble. The, 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 wait, is it a venom? People with venom. This sounds like what the, is the classic word venom weird to you? things end of snakes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is there snakes there? There are snakes on every island. <laughs> oh, no. Not again. Brian 
if we've been hoodwinked yet again? So, the fatal flaw of the weird thing scenario. There's Eric snakes Meyer. there. Eric sent this to us. And uh, the headline from uh, Share After Reading, this island is so infested that it had to be quarantined by the government. And, you know, the new internet journalism followed by WTF. So... Wait, tell me this. The, uh, so, so it boils down to they tried to set fire to an entire I- island just to get rid of all the snakes on it. Okay, because you see, it has two names. It's Isla de Comera Grande. All the Spanish-speaking people out here, or Portuguese-speaking people are upset with me. Nicknamed Snake Island is a 430,000 square meter island off the coast of the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil. It is home to a species of fertile ants, the golden lancehead viper, which is one of the most venomous snakes in the world. Local legend claims there are five snakes to every square meter. No. But the Discovery Channel said that's ridiculous, and they said that it's maybe only about one snake per square meter. (laughs) Good God. (laughs) It's the only species of snake on the island. Uh, it is heavily inbred, heavily hungry, and apparently, like, this island is riddled with snakes, and it climbs trees despite having that snake prehensile tail that apparently other snake tree, tree climbing snakes has. It eats birds. It eats everything. This venom is pretty damn dangerous. Um, so, yeah, it's called Snake Island. This is a terrible vacation. Actually, I'm still down for it. I say, really? Uh, well, I mean, he's gonna put on a couple galoshes, <laughs> maybe, maybe a little, I'm little a, rubber I'm bathing a, I'm suit. Gonna, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show up in like, um, uh, like a, 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 I'm gonna visit a blacksmith, and I'm gonna show up in full armor, and it's just gonna go chink chink when it tries Smithy, to bite me. Smithy, hammer me out a suit for Snake Island. <laughs> Come, let us go on a walk. Shunk, 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 shunk. Take these really, two The only inhabitant was pavement. a lighthouse keeper. Bling, bling. And like, want to talk about a suck job. All right, no, let's talk, let's talk about this for real. So, not so great as a vacation. How no. much would you charge? I'm a crazy, Monopoly man shows up and says, your job, Justin, Andrew, is to go experience 48 hours on this island. Uh, you have virtually no, uh, you, you can provision yourself with $1,000 of whatever, but but you, you have no shelter. You just have to go and live and be there. How much would you charge? And understand, this is not like in theoretical. This is like in reality. Like you could pull out your iPhone. You can record blog posts. You could tell this story. So there's some value to this amazing experience. How much would you want to go do this? Uh, unless I can get, like, I guess sometimes scientists go there and they get waivers. I don't know how far in they go. Um, did you watch Riddick? No, I did not. I haven't seen it yet. No. All right. I heard it was Um, pretty much, uh, the, the pitch black, right? It was pretty much that again. Yeah, it was, but it was like, I could watch a thousand of those movies. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. So there was this guy down in Florida whose blood they would use for anti-venom because he'd been bitten by so many snakes, survived it, that he actually produced, he, he's, he's one of these, produced a, a good anti-venom. So he's one of these people, wow. he could get bit by rattlers and other snakes and walk it off. So you can develop resistance to these things. Getting to that point is a challenge. Sure. I would have to figure out what is, and I don't know if I could afford to get to there for a thousand bucks, but like, you know, I, I I'm looking like this is I'm probably going to die here. Really? I, I mean, Brian, it's a snake every square meter. I know. Apparently, the venom is is something that killed people before. Like, normally, if you get bitten, let's say snakes are in your house and you need to get to a boat to get off the island, like your danger is in you, like just can't get back to land fast enough. Like, you know, maybe if the venom is super, super toxic. And that happened to not one but three people, according to that legend. Right. Like, this is extraordinarily potent venom and apparently a bazillion snakes. All right. So, uh, well, well so what's, what, what's your fee, Justin Robert Young, to take a week off from your regular gig? And Let, and- me, let me explain. 90% of Brazilian snake bite-related fatalities are due to this genus of snake. Okay, the gold land heads that occupy this island, they go, they get over half a meter long. They have a fast acting poison that melts the flesh around the bite. Jeez. 
All right. Well, that affects my price. What, what, yeah, what, 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 what is your price, Justin? 48 hours, two days. Two days? And you're decently provisioned. You got a thousand bucks or however much of your own money you want to spend. Like you can, you can, I, and I know there's no cheap anti venom or whatever, but you can, I don't know, you can put on stuff that. Uh, I can't just park a boat. I mean, like, just like look out. Uh, no, out you, of you, a have, you have to spend Marcella the whole time you, on the island. visited Snake Island over 20 times says that the locals claim of one to five snakes per square meter is an exaggeration, though perhaps not by much. Much one snake per square meter is more like it. Not that it should ease one's mind. At one snake per meter, you're never more than three feet away from death. I, 40 grand, I'm going to go. But what? You don't even get a full year's salary out of like a, it's a only roll d- the it's dice you expect to die trip? Two, two days, and I figure you could probably put on like a triple thick like leather, uh, some, some, some kind of like bite proof pants. I understand. Pants. I think with this one, there's no shame in getting under bid, right? Like, you're just naming your price, and then if somebody else wants to come in, you're not competitively bidding for 48 hours on Snake Death Island, right? Uh, yeah, no, I, I would say very quickly. If someone comes in and like, 30 grand, bro, I'm there. I'd be like, you know what? Maybe he's a better man That's for the fine. job. Listen, man, you got to <laughs> know when to hold him, know when to fold him. Exactly. Know when to walk away from Snake Island <laughs> for less than an average salary in would, San would, would you really not do it for 40000 No. But, but but like you can that would not be my bid, and I, if somebody offered it to me, I would not do it. No. Really? Wait, you would fall up? Wow, that's amazing. No. Brian, I could die. What part of death do you not understand? Well, you, well, you could die doing anything. You could die. Uh, all of a sudden, I turn Number into one, Andrew trying to sell yeah. us on the island. <laughs> He's like, one, you're one, always in danger. There's snakes everywhere. I'm not doing it for less than those crazy people do for, like, you know, uh, ice road trucking or or crab fishing in Alaska or whatever, where there's like a high death rate. 48 hours for, I mean, first of all, you could pretty much like rent a spacesuit and, and just waddle around in your snake proof spacesuit for, for 48 hours. The only game is a thousand dollar budget, by the way. Well, okay. No, outside of that, you would spend your own money. And in which case, like. So now you were doing it for less than 40,000. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I'm safer. (laughs) Why? I got to imagine there's if, some if I, kind if I of... am doing it, and if I am honestly being made to consider to do it, I have to leave enough money that it would affect the lives of my friends and family and those that, that I know. That if I were to die, at least it would be money that would better their lives, uh, which is more than 40000 Well, I mean, if... Uh... Yeah, I mean, you could you could buy an insurance. Forty thousand, forty thousand happens, you know, like more often. Like you know, grandma dies, and 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 the family has to split forty thousand or something like sure. that. Sure, I, I so 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 wow, this this is amazing because number one, like to me, there's some value in just having the adventure of going and doing it, and forty thousand is enough that I will get off my butt and go do it and have the adventure and. Take care of myself. I, but this is not like, oh, like the amazing vistas and like the gorgeous. No, it's even better. Waterfalls. It's just stand on a rock where death encircles you and hope that what you have built up as your barriers to death hold, that your levees hold. And instead, the flood of instant perishing does I not breach. Bet, I bet there's at least one listener to the Weird Things podcast right now who will probably email us who's very familiar with snake handling, very familiar with uh, with snake protection processes or whatever, and, and finds us horrifically uh, Smart weenie. for we, avoiding them. No. No. I, I, someone out there is just like, I'll do it for $500 and three tacos. Listen, there's not, listen, the, the, but the question is not, are there people that will do it, right? Because there are people that will do anything. And the people that will do that for free That's true. because of the adrenaline that comes along with being that close to death. Yeah. The idea is for us, as completely untrained and unskilled in this position, if we were to, like, all of a sudden that hits Craigslist and it says, please email your bids <laughs> to idiots at snakemountain.org. Edu, like, I, 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 I don't know. I would be interested because, uh, well, neither. Uh, what number would would you 
reconsider at, Justin? We're we're the low end is uh, I'd have to and I'm 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 up against it to do my taxes like this week. I have, I'll look at what I have made and project it out for the next year, and that's the minimum. The minimum is a year's salary. A whole year's salary just to go and hang out? To put your, I mean, like, again, this is not a thing where I will get anything out of it except for just being close to death. Huh. And at that point, you might as well just ingest poison, as much poison as you can over a 48-hour period and, like, survive it and take money, right? Like, it's not a beautiful place. It's literally just rocks and dirt and sand and snakes. So for you, a year's salary. What about you, Andrew? Ah. I, I won. I don't know enough to risk. I would want to talk to, you know, a researcher who's been there and be like, all right, listen, what do I got? Like, oh no, the snakes are actually really scared of you. And they only like people wear suntan lotion and be like, oh, okay, done. But if you wear a spacesuit, they will just attack you in mass. Yes. Um, and these are tree climbing snakes, by the way, Brian. Yeah, I mean, look, I get, I get that it'll be complicated and and a big deal. I I get that, right? So, what's your price? What's your lowest price? Uh, well, Brian's doing it for thirty dollars in a Hardy's hamburger. Yeah, well, for 40, 40 grand, and I'm building some. I mean, because think about it, like, I'll, like for that, like I'll spend a hundred dollars on a like a grenade that'll that'll <laughs> you know throw uh, a snake poison out in the area or whatever. I'm getting like a rebreather it's like a full body suit it's I, i'm gonna be wearing like a a, a a a still suit from dune where where i'm totally like i'm pooping on the inside and then recycling okay, everything. so you know like your your initial like you get a thousand dollars but then you can get paid any amount to go do this you kind of negated the whole thousand dollar limit because i could say oh a million dollars i'll spend five hundred thousand dollars on buying the metal undersea suit. i know but 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 you won't get it because i've already undercut you for for at, at oh, forty thousand yeah. dollars, no, Brian, I'm taking out an insurance policy on your life and letting you do this. <laughs> all right, fair enough, Brian. All right, so deal. Snake Island has accepted your deal for forty thousand. I'm giving you five hours. The over under is five hours before you find yourself straight Muldooned, like crouched in the bush, looking to your left because you think you've avoided the snake, seeing a big fat snake in your face, going <laughs> clever girl, and then <laughs> boom. Fair enough. Well, uh, corpse. Is let's being find out. Dragged off the island. And thus we launched the Weird Things Patreon. Uh, and <laughs> to send Brian way, to Snake Island. The chat, the chat room here, Brian. What's that? Um, I, I, I think uh, uh, everybody thinks you're, you're flat out nuts. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, like, I may be. I may be. But I don't know. $40,000. I mean, understand, the people who died, they were doing it for $40, not $40,000. They were just there because there was $40 worth of stuff around. And it's like, what you're saying is and that they you're had not no protection. So, so listen, there's somebody in the chat room whose name handle is Pro Snake Handler. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty sure. Uh, actually, I would like to point out that's Brant's. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my number one Brant there. <laughs> well, listen to Brant. Fair enough. I like the idea of professional snake handler. Like, no, I don't work <laughs> not, for science. None of this you know, amateurs people. business. No, no, I have parties, children's parties. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys want to do picks? Let's do picks. I, uh, I, 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 I guess I just have to double down on. It wasn't even my pick last week. It's just what I was up to last week. Um, I mentioned that I started rereading Name of the Wind, but I've mega double down because after listening to it, I was like, I think my 10 year old daughter can handle this. So I've got Penny listening to the audiobook. This is the first time she's ever listened to an audiobook. She's 10 years old now. And, uh, I am almost done with the follow up, uh, the wise man's fear. This is it the King killer Chronicles. Yep. That is exactly correct. Written by Patrick Rothfuss expertly told on audiobook by, uh, Nick Podell. Uh, man, is it good? It is really, really good. And I'm really, enjoying reading it for a second time. I can't say enough good stuff about it. I know that he's got some kind of novella that he's working on in that universe. Um, and then after that, you know, it'll be what, like a half decade until we get the final book. But uh, man, is it good. I, I so very much enjoy it. And I recommend everybody else listen to it. 
Well, my pick is, and I watched this uh, a few weeks ago. Every now and then I go through a little bit of a kick and I decide I want to go watch something of a genre. And I realized I had never seen this film before, even though I'm a big Clint Eastwood fan. Mm-hmm. And that is High Plains Drifter. I've never seen it. I am so, only familiar with the, uh, the Beastie Boys song. <laughs> same thing. High Plains Drifter was directed by Clint Eastwood, and it certainly had the influences of, you know, having worked with Sergio Leone, but it also had, it's Clint Eastwood, when he's taken the, you know, the Man of No Name character, of which, you know, Stephen King, when he created the Gunslinger trill- series, a trilogy series, used, you know, was very influenced by the idea of watching this character and the idea of sort of this Western fantasy-esque persona i had no idea how much eastwood had embraced the idea of almost the mystical magical elements of that and if you watch high plains drifter very very evident in there and you know eastwood's take on that between that and then later on when he did pale rider and his idea of you know who this character really is takes on a mystical connotation to it and high plains drifter is kind of a very trippy movie and can, i, can, I enjoyed can it you thoroughly tease some of the mystical elements of it if uh, unless you think that it would spoil it i would say that like it's it's a you have a you, you're used to the idea of the the lawman showing up in town to save the town but the premise here is the lawman shows up in town and it's an evil wicked town Hmm. that needs to be punished and it's the idea of the avenging angel or avenging ghost essentially kind of concept and that's what made me want to go i gotta go watch this because it's not just hey it's a western it's him looking at like this is almost a religious allegory etc and it takes place, he shot it, I think it was like Lake Mono or whatever, Mono Lake, which is this really weird kind of looks like, you know, almost this Planet of the Apes sort of environment. So he went for this very, doesn't look like any other kind of location you've seen in a Western before. It looks almost like an alien landscape to it. It's very, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, when he first shows up in town, the things that happen are, you know, what he does is, is, is it's great classic kind of Clint Eastwood. And the, the character is very interesting. But if you look at it like it is almost a biblical narrative of this, what happens when he shows up, it's pretty neat. Right on. And so uh, and so specifically, it would it would be a, 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 which movie specifically you said? High this Plains is High Plains Drifter. High, High Plains Drifter. All right. And I mean, that, that, Netflix. Yeah, I mean, it, it, at one point it involves them having them painting the entire town red and writing the word hell on a sign when people nice. come in. Um, all right. So my pick is uh, Ashley got a fit. Somebody bought her, a friend of hers bought her a Fitbit force mm-hmm. for uh, Christmas. And whoever the person that they bought it from accidentally sent to. Uh, so I got a Fitbit force, or at least I was going to Ashley wanted to see whether or not she could trade it in. They wound up having a recall of them. So now they are no longer sold this model of it. Uh, so I was like, well, too bad. I guess I won't get a Fitbit force because this one was the smallest possible and my manly wrist, uh, certainly would not accommodate such a delicate, uh, lady Fitbit and, as it turns out, it fits very snug on my wrist because I have a uh, delicate, uh, very genteel feminine wrist. I mean, a lot of people uh, don't know out. that, but the first time we met in 2008 at Halloween Horror Nights, I was like, yeah. hello, Justin Robert Young. Those are delightful, ladylike <laughs> yeah. wrists. You, you actually you, you were catcalling and stomping your foot on the ground as I... Which, which felt a like, bit inappropriate. As, as only my wrist was revealed from around <laughs> the corner and you're like... Check out the wrist on that one. Like, and I kept I kept uh, asking woo-hoo. you what time it was, just so you would kind of kind of pull back a bit of your long sleeve shirt, and I would yeah. you know salaciously lick my lips and be all and like, oh, like my head was eventually revealed, and you were like, mah, mah, and like you're <laughs> but I was really kept, awkward. I, so, I kept asking you to wear a bag over your head and just show me your <laughs> wrist. Just show me your wrist real quick. Uh, just the wrist. Uh, no, seriously, right, so, show us the wrist, Justin. <laughs> So I've been wearing the Fitbit Force. It's interesting. I'm not somebody that would describe oneself as interested in the this new fitness craze of, of the quantifiable self and, and tracking footsteps and, and calories and stuff like that. I know a lot of people are. Uh, a lot of people enjoy it. It has been an interesting experience so far. I have uh, enjoyed having it. I have found myself 
taking stairwells where I would not otherwise just to kind of see that number go up. Uh, there's certainly something to that psychology of, of understanding where you're at and wanting to do slightly better because of it. Uh, I don't know whether or not I've really lost any weight, but I will say this. Uh, I, and this is a very specific use case. I wake up, uh, a, very early a lot to catch flights like I did this morning. I was like, woke up in the very room that Andrew is in right now in Los Angeles and flew to San Francisco, uh, waking up at like six in the morning. And it often is very earlier than that. So I can get to SFO super early in the morning. Uh, it has a silent alarm on it. Uh, and you don't have to reach over and hit a button or hit your phone. It's always on you. So it has been a really cool and interesting way to not bother Ashley in the morning when I have to wake up super, super, super early. Um, so I, I like that. I don't know whether or not it's worth, I got it for free. So I don't know whether it's worth the money, but I have enjoyed having it. Now, I've now do you, I oftentimes when I'm on a short schedule and it's important that I make it to the airport or whatever, I have a difficult time falling asleep if I'm not utterly confident that I will wake up with the alarm. That's part of the reason I set like two, even three alarms. If I'm in a hotel, I'll set two alarms and then also ask the front desk to call and so on. Like, yeah. uh, uh, you, you are confident that the, that the buzzing on your wrist wakes you up. Yeah. There's, I mean, far more than, the audio element, you know, I think like you were relying on how there is always the fear that you are sleeping too deep to hear stuff where I think if somebody were just jiggling your wrists violently, right. you right. would usually wake up, you know, at, at a certain point. So, uh, I found it, it is at a hundred percent success rate, uh, for me, not that waking up in the morning has necessarily been a hard, uh, element. I usually only set one alarm anyway, but at least this way, you know, it's like, it's one of those things where like my alarm will go off and then I'll try to stop it, but I'll actually snooze it instead of, you know, turning it off and then it'll go off again in five seconds. It's, it's kind of annoying, but this has been good. I've enjoyed it. Who knows whether or not I'll lose weight with it. Um, but that's what it is. The Fitbit force and you can't buy it because apparently it leaks uh, hot snake venom and burns your hand off. <laughs> Made on this island off the coast of Brazil by yes. snakes. By Brian Brushwood, who's apparently making $40,000 during his stay. <laughs> like, wait, uh, like per day? No. Just, so, uh, just once. <laughs> Brian, your homework for next episode yeah. is I want you to run this theory by Bonnie. I will. I actually will. In fact, maybe, maybe we'll have Bonnie show up for a segment next week and we'll talk it out. Yeah. That would $40, be $40,000. Cool. There was. Uh, I don't know if I told this story on, on the, uh, on the podcast, but I had a situation. It was, it was probably the first time I've had a domestic situation like that. Like that is akin to, to Brian. We're hiring somebody at, at the go game for my, or the job that I have. And I felt very strongly about one of the candidates. And I was like, uh, listen, hire her if you need to fire me. And I kind of kept saying that as like to show how much I felt one of the candidates was better than the other one. And uh, I told that to Ashley. And she's like, can you please stop asking to get fired? <laughs> like, <laughs> your income is a crucial element to our lives. Can you please stop? This is, this is what happens like, when you're... Willy-nilly putting it in danger as a figure of speech. This is, uh, this is uh, the, the figures of speech that come out once you're, you're drunk with the success of, of the Night Attack Patreon. No, I don't even think it's necessarily that. I think it was, just, it was, it was me just, just being the... the uh, I don't know if, you've, if you guys have picked up on this, but I am, I am prone to hyperbole and loud bold huh. statements and uh that was that was kind of just uh, an element of that no kid i actually don't want them to fire me i would be very upset if they fired me okay. now that that's cleared up <laughs> yeah smash cut to the entire staff of the go game sitting around watching this live stream live exactly. as it happens well gentlemen it's been weird man uh, that was a <clears throat> that was a really fun episode. Hey, so. let's figure out what we want to call it, huh? <clears throat> I think we <clears throat> should have a thing where we decide what the name of the episode is before we leave. I got it. Let's call it Fantasy Island. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you don't think that's giving away too much since that's the whole thing we're figuring out? Nope. Uh, maybe, just but think it's kind that of we were fun going to know and have you guys not West. know.
right. What's that, Justin? I said they'll just think we were going to Key West. Yeah. Uh, yeah, weird things. One for old. So you know what I can't find online? Well, is uh, Ventures of Briscoe County Jr. Wow, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My daughter had a uh, tw- uh, 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 slumber party last night. We had seven. Uh, my daughter turned 10. So mm-hmm. we had a bunch. We had seven nine and 10 year old girls at the house last night. So this effectively is was that like the opening canon to a decade of slumber parties? God, I hope not. Uh, like this is no, no. You're you're just. <laughs> if you were beaten and well worn, like you are now just entering the decade of slumber parties. Man, I'd hate to. I hate to put. Uh, let me just say, uh, in related news, I'm really excited that we're setting up this office warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> where where I'm gonna I'm gonna not be at the house an awful lot. That'll be uh, that'll be good. I'll go to work and maybe stay at work a long time. <laughs> Holy cow. <coughs> uh, Tanky, if you want to make a spinny weird things thing for the lower left, we would love. That would be love, awesome. I love, love the love, Diamond love. Club one. Yeah, I, I only thought to, to to fire that up like halfway through. I apologize that I, that I spaced out. I think on it looks slippy. I'm going to use a restroom right back. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to sit here and wait. I'm going to hold my breath till you finish being. Andrew's peeing. <laughs> boop a doop a wop. Hey, um, uh, Flying Pop Tart Cat, uh, yes, the odds are actually really good. I'll probably play The Last of Us tonight or The, um, the Walking Dead. N- uh, nothing else is scheduled for tonight, right, Justin? Uh, we do the, our new creative podcast beta right after this, but after oh, that. No, that's great. That's great. Okay. <laughs> you can clearly see. Andrew's hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Although I do like the idea. The weird things warehouse still a thing. Not the weird things warehouse that I ever that I ever shot in, but there is still a warehouse in which <coughs> all of Andrew's uh, product oh. and stuff is in. Dog on it. I forgot to mention on the episode. If you guys are just joining us, uh, they are rerunning. Hacking the system a third time on Nat Geo on the 25th, two days from now. I guess that'll be Tuesday, Tuesday night. Uh, certainly all the watching, all of the noise, all of the telling that you guys could do, all of those things. How will... much? So it matters that you watch. Can we say that not why, but it matters that everybody watches and that the number comes in good because there are decisions yet to be made by the network and... Yeah. There is evidence no, no, no. that there's yeah, still they, they, deliberation. I, I don't even think that's rocket science or whatever. Like they, they, they certainly haven't decided if they want to do a full season of it or not. Yes. And, and this is the kind of thing like uh, think about not where Mythbusters is now, but where it was when it began. It was a very close thing whether or not they wanted to keep on going. You know, it's it's an early motion ends up becoming an avalanche uh, that led to this, you know, 14 year dynasty for them, you know? Well, and also it's, uh, repeats mean a lot in cable. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the repeated viewings add up and I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Anything I would say right now is speculation on, on Nat Geo's, uh, strategy, but I mean, me too, uh, me too. I'm, I'm so very far on the outside. It's so, it's so, uh, bizarre to, uh, you know, to only hear things third hand about the stuff. But uh, I would imagine that 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 the repeats doing well is a very big, important thing if you want to see more episodes of Hacking the System. So yes, will that be watch during, it. Uh, will that be during the Night Attack movie draft? I believe it will, question mark. Maybe, uh, maybe we can throw that in as one of our games that we play with. Uh, I'll find out what time. Um, also, we, uh, we have to talk about... about uh, the episode because we gotta we gotta get on on point with everybody who's playing and then also there was something in rewatching. Uh, oh, I can I can announce that Professor Shy Guy will be producing good our music. 
Good, good, good. So he'll be uh, he'll be sort of handling the. Uh, oh, did did we? Put I out- don't know if we're going to have him do the the auctioneering element. Uh, I think that's something that we maybe maybe before, like when you were doing the at the beginning of you doing the game live stream, we can kind of do a a a diamond club chat realm called arms to see if we can get together some of the resources like we talked about in terms of like the yeah. silent auction. Sure, stuff. sure. Uh, Getawag says that he has a movie draft info or intro info intro that he's rocking. Uh, good. You know, I was thinking no matter, even if it's not our newest episode, we should submit it to iTunes as like a big deal um, as like a thing for them to show. Cause I think it's a fun yeah. thing. For people. I mean, to, to be honest, like I always worry about those episodes cause I don't know how entertaining it is to other people to listen to not us talk all. through stuff. Uh, but, but, uh, but, uh, Especially with like, I know last year was the best one that we'd ever done with Ali, you know, doing the little jaunty intros. To yeah, I think so it, it's gotten more entertaining to it. And also it's like, I think if we did that plus like a little 20 minute, you know, or a little 15 minute introduction of like what it is, how you can play, here are the rules. And now we're going to do our own thing. Then it's like, it's kind of instructional for people who have no idea what our show is. And right. here's an element for it, you know? Because it is super fun. Oh, shoot. What is this? And summer are upon us only when we hold our draft for the Summer Movie Fantasy League. And tonight, my friends, is no different. <laughs> it's like, don't count. That's the sound of a ghost phone. <laughs> so tonight, we're going to show you eight silent ways to kill a man. It's the <laughs> damn Enterprise in here. That's like, I ain't never seen so many <laughs> monitors in my life. A young girl and her father who live in this place called the Bat Club. Oh no, a central Florida man? Yeah, yeah. Crazy, but only in the middle. Excelsior! <laughs> if they were using 27 inch laptop uh, tablets. <laughs> God's money bags? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, look, that's a that's a that's a little glimpse at uh Tanky's work for that for that background that's that's gonna look like uh like our like our studio. That is awesome. So when uh, uh, you said you're going to get serious about setting up the studio this week. week. Uh, yeah. So now we have to make a decision on what we are getting computer wise within the next like 12 hours. Uh, I, I promised I'd make a decision by the time I got back and I still haven't made a decision on what we're getting largely because I haven't done my due diligence price wise. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want a shortcut, you could talk to our friends over at Doghouse systems. They'll probably oh, work. Believe you me, Brian, we are, we are well, we are well past, uh, we are well past that, that point. That's, it really has come down to whether or not how cheap we can get a Mac pro, whether or not we want to stay with a Mac pro or we want to go with Doghouse. Yeah. Which, we have we have at cost pricing because apparently they're not in the market of just giving out free PCs anymore. Anymore, that's uh, somebody oh, ruined that. Uh, that was that well has run dry. That's uh, that's us screwing it up. <clears throat> uh, QNX monkey jury, why are we banished Sarah Lane from the movie draft? It's the second year in a row without her. Uh, listen, Sarah is going to be on our show once a month, every month. We love Sarah. There are a few people in the world that we love more than Sarah. We have doubled the amount of people in this year's movie draft. I am like the reason why we're doing teams this year is because we didn't want to leave people out. And there were just too many awesome people that we wanted to have a part of the draft. That's why we're doing teams. I'm sorry that even with teams, some people cannot have it on, but I figured if we were going to leave anybody out, it had to be Sarah who we have on so often. I'm sorry, Andrew, what'd you say? Just gotta accept that there's not room for everybody, guys. Not everybody gets to be part of it. You're the one who never. I've asked <laughs> you to be left out the draft for years, and you never want to be on it. Part of it. <laughs> Man, I'm just looking at uh, uh, Tinky just posted in the chat like a collection of all, all of the art that she's done developing the Night Attack logo for us. Like, who is and, Tanky and why is she amazing? And uh, also as beautiful as she is talented. G- yes, she is all of those things. Uh, Tanky, where just did sort of, she come from? I don't know. She was, she, she was born. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? <laughs> That's true. That's, let us ask. So she put together, she's the one who made the amazing uh, yeah. animated bug up in the corner, which you can see right there. Uh, and I guess I didn't realize she was doing this. She apparently made a like a, a Schwood gaming. Schwood gaming. Yeah. Look at that. 
And then this oh is God. one modeled on the studio. Are you, uh, uh, what, wh where's your head at on how you're going to set up the studio as far so as the background? Well, we've kind of come to, it's, it's going to be a similar trifold thing for now. Um, we, I definitely want at least one panel of the of the same clear material so the corrugated can, plastic so it would we can look have like, so yeah. just for night attack it looks kind of as seamless as it can you right. know um or at least it looks deliberate and then we're going to go with those le with, uh, at least two of those uh color changing leds so we can set color profiles mm -hmm. uh for the different shows and then the biggest thing that we're just trying to determine right now is what we are carving out for Ashley's space. Yeah. So she can shoot on it as well. But it looks like what we're going to do is just take this whole back wall and, and set everything up uh, and then have uh, the, the color parts, uh, you know, just so we can, you know, I can make it blue or weird for weird things. I can make it, you know, uh, contrasting to Brian's for, uh, for night attack. So it just looks, um, it looks deliberate, I think, because that's really like the biggest thing is is in terms of it being pro, you know, we like the big key is effort. So, yeah. uh, and by the way, uh, what's amazing, somebody was saying something, something about putting a green screen behind and then you could do X, Y and Z. <clears throat> and it really hit me like how much has the stock value of green screen plummeted in the last five years? Five years ago, if you had green screen, oh, I don't that think was, so. oh, no, 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 no. To me, like, like five years ago, if you had a green screen, that meant you were pro. Now, if you have green screen, it means you're on YouTube and, uh, and, and, uh, oh, it, I don't, I don't think so at all. What? Really? I, mean, I think it's yeah, how well You don't it's think done. about it, but like, I think so green screen got, has gotten you have better. So easy People to gotten... do cheap, cheapo, obvious green screen and bad lighting, but if you I mean, want that's to do it. <clears throat> Like like, like like the soup or Tosh or something like that. Like that doesn't seem uh, green screen, but a lot of it is, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's done that looks really, really good. That just adds depth and, and stuff that you mix with an, with a real set, you know, to just have it uh, look, look better. I think like people have got like green screen as a medium has, it, it, you know, the shitty use of it looks like shitty green screen. Um, but in general, I think that they're, they, they've used, I mean, like by and large, it's, it's, you know, still a very valuable tool when it's, when it's done right. You just don't know it. You just, it's done but when it's like, I'm going to stand in front of you and put my virtual like Tom set Merritt, plug in back Tom there. Merritt's green screen. That looks great. <laughs> this, see, that? It's not, that's not true. Oh, uh, yeah. the, screen. uh, uh, Fantastic. I mean, I don't know. Like yeah, I, when I think of crappy green screen, sadly, the first thing that pops into my mind is, uh, Lucille two on uh, <laughs> on Arrested oh Development God. was that awful or what? That that new season, man. Remember when we were excited for that season? Wait, so so are you no longer down? Are are you down on it now? Or? Oh no no no! I I love the season, but I love the season for reasons that I don't think are really related to entertainment. Like I'm I love the season because they tried really 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 hard to make it happen, and I can't fault the writing. You know, like the writing, although like I don't know how much different that writing was from the scripts that they shot the initial season with. Um, there are some character things that I think are a little bit weird. Right. But in general, it's like so much of that show was the energy between everybody. And they it was like, fuck, it was shot reverse shot on green screen. You know? Yeah. So like, what are you going to do? Yeah. There's that man. I'm so excited about us going to teams partly, partly for the fact that it lets so many more people play partly for the delicious debates internally that will happen. Um, I hope that, that at no point do you and I argue and, and, and cause issues <laughs> with a disagreement. No. So here's what I was thinking. The format would be, uh, we do silent auction, right? And we have our auctioneer kind of read off, the 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 bids. Oh, uh, I mean, do 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 we want to put this out to the guys to see if they? Here's the thing: if you know of a way to do this, great. We'll use whatever exists out there in the cloud, on the web. Uh, if you are so inclined and have programming chops, 
uh, be you a, a a Dan Dirks or a T two T two? There's got yeah. Let, let's let's look for a, an off the rack solution if we if we can for right now, just because I'm sure it'll have little things that we're not thinking about. Correct. Um, like little little tools. But uh, if if you can find anything, we have done no research as we very rarely do. Right. But I was thinking in terms of the format of the show. We'll have the we'll have the shy guy stinger either play or he'll perform. Right. Uh, we'll open the bidding, set a timer. We'll have the auctioneer read off the bids, and then the winner of the bid will explain why they did it, and that's where we can kind of open it up to the cacophony of everybody, um, of everybody saying, "Nah, it's stupid," or "This exactly. is going to be great." So, 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 th- but the idea being that there needs to be some kind of simple way. That uh, that that what uh, twelve people can click yes at a time, you know, or, or like yes, go higher, go higher, number go higher, and then and and something real time that monitors it and and lets us figure out like okay, well, you know, going once, going twice, you know, this is. I mean, it, it could even really just be like a group me. Yeah. To be honest, uh, if we wanted to get yeah. if we wanted to get dirt dumb, you know, we could so, always. I, and I guess I guess the rule will have to be Justin for good or for ill that uh, either party in the team oh yeah can bid can and bid that bid is final and that bid yeah the, it's not a consensus going into it wow man whoo this will be interesting <laughs> IRC channel with a bot t two t two says that's a great idea actually yeah if there's a bot that can that can measure it. And uh, just somebody. But we watching. do. We do want some auctioneer to just be like, Ryan with ten, Corey with eleven, Tom with this. Yeah. Blurb with ding dongs. Blurb with the ding dongs. Right on. Uh, dude, we do not have a lot of time, Justin, to <laughs> to do our research and have our conversations. For for the draft. It's only, what, 40, oh, 48 God. hours yeah, no, away? Yeah, it's like 48 hours. Yeah. This is the first time, we, oh, wow, we can do research together. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I feel like I feel like we're an unstoppable team. I'd, I'd like I to think like so. I feel like you have a proven drafting acumen, and I can yell. <laughs> Between the two of us, we've got uh, quite a You're track record. the most decorated team. We well, also invented the game. <laughs> and we also made all the awards that we're wearing on our chest right now. <laughs> but also, listen, if Chris Hardwick can have a web series slash television show where he just beats people in bowling because he's really good at it, then we can have our celebrity draft. Exactly. Draft. And everyone gets to play along. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Uh, wait. Wow. I meant to say amazing, but I said amazing. So amazing. All right. Uh, well, you guys are going to do your creative on whatever. Yeah, stay and on DiamondClub.tv. We'll be on uh, the YouTube embed. It'll uh, pop up right there, and uh, then we'll go and do a little thing there. Yeah. And uh, there was something else I wanted to say, but I don't remember what it was. So I guess basically uh, we'll take a break. See you guys. Let me enjoy. Bring you back. I'll bring Andrew you back and right Justin. Now, I'll bring you back. And I'll play a game later right on. Now, I'll bring you back. Let me bring you back right now for you No one can settle the speech in my terrible tooth To tell you the truth, I wouldn't even level with you Indeed, me, me, me was a general rule Mama's like, please, I need sleep, I'm begging you do She'd do anything to get me to snooze Fed me alphabet soup or vegetable stew An edible goop, you can better refuse Cause it's beautiful